Hello, this is Christian Baker from C4 Sports Talk. Today, we're here on, at the beautiful campus of Hampton University, and today I will be talking about um, the edge rushers of the 2023 NFL Draft. Um, this edge rush class, is, I feel like it's very interesting. There's a lot of um, very talented edge rushers. I feel like this is the deepest part um, of this draft class. The edge rushers in the corners, I feel like you can get a talented player in the first, second, third, fourth, or fifth round. I feel like there's so many pass rushers that will have an impact on um, this NFL, this this day and age. So let's get started. The first player I will be discussing today, um, this is my number two player in the whole entire draft class, 2023. Um, his name is Will Anderson from Oklahoma. Um, I feel like he's a general generational pass rusher. Um, he's dominant off the edge. He's very strong. He's only 240 pounds, but he plays a whole lot bigger. Um, it's like watching a man amongst boys. He's he's very powerful. He reminds me a lot of um, late career Von Miller. I wouldn't say early career because um, Von Miller, his bend was just um, amazing. His ability to bend around tackles. Um, I feel like Will Anderson's bend isn't as isn't as um, it's not as dominant. But as a pure pass rusher, his um, his bull rush, his his ability to use his hands, I feel like he will be a dominant pass rusher and a 15 to 20 sack guy eventually in his career um, in this NFL. Next, we have edge rusher Tyree Wilson. Um, I feel like in this class, he's the boomer bust guy. He's huge, 6'6", 270, long arms. Um, his ability to stop the run is going to be amazing right away just because of his size alone. But I feel like he needs to work on his craft a little bit more, his pass rush tools, his moves, his arms, his ability to use his arms and his hands. I feel like he has the size to be dominant right away. You look at Rashawn Gary, um, the Packers drafted him a couple years ago. I mean, this isn't a comp for him, but because he's bigger, he's just – a freak athlete. You, you've never really seen anything like it out of a guy like Tyree Wilson, but he has to be refined, kind of like Rashawn Gary. Rashawn Gary um, sat behind Preston Smith and Zadarius Smith for a year and kind of just worked on his game and then came out. Um, his, his pass rush tools were a lot better, and I feel like Tyree Wilson could use that same kind of treatment. Once he, once he gets his technique down as a pass rusher, I feel like he will be dominant and be one of the Top a top ten um, pass rusher in this league, um, like I said, fifteen to twenty set guy. Um, I have him going in the top ten, somewhere in the top ten. Probably um, he's mocked a lot to Seattle. I could see Seattle um, taking him with that number five pick. But whatever whatever team gets him is going to get a project, but a guy that you can mold into a dominant pass rusher. The next pass rusher I'm going to talk about, he's a lot lower on everybody else's list. This is kind of my guy. It's one of my favorite players in the draft class. B.J. Ojolari from LSU. I believe he's going to be dominant as soon as he steps foot in the league. His ability to rush the passer. It's one thing to know how to use the moves, but to know when to use the moves and the ability to use them in a the correct way, I feel like that will make him very successful in the league. Um, he's very expo He's very explosive. Just very long. He could, he could put on a couple pounds. He's, he's kind of slim, but I don't think that's going to be that big of an issue. Um, he's athletic. He's, um, he has an NFL bloodline. His brother plays for the um, New York Giants. Um, his, his, his granddad was a king. So I feel like um, it runs in the blood. He, I, I really like him. Um, I feel like he's a top 10 player in this class easily. I feel like whatever team drafts him. A lot of people have him going in the late first round. I feel as if he could go in the top 10 and start right away and be very dominant. His his spin move is amazing. Um, just It's like the way he plays the game, it's, it's like an art. The way he uses his hands, the way he uses his length, his bend is amazing. I think he has the best bend in this class. Um, besides this next guy I'm going to talk about. Um, but I feel like you're getting a, a pass rusher that can kind of do it all. I feel like his biggest weakness is his ability to stop the run. But when it just comes to getting after the quarterback um, on third down, just pinning your ears back and going to get a sack. I feel like there's no one in this class that can really do it better other than Will Anderson. And that's why I'm so high on him. 
So um, BJ Ozilar is my number three pass rush from LSU. Um, the next pass rusher I'm gonna talk about, this is one of the most athletic guys you'll see, period, point blank. He ran a 4-3 at the combine. Running the four, ple four threes as a pass rusher is insane. Um, and that's Nola Smith from Georgia. He's very thin, um, somewhere in the 230s. But his bend and his acceleration, his explosiveness, I feel like is amazing. Um, I believe he plays he plays a lot stronger than what his weight says. He is a lot stronger than what his weight says. He's he's solidly built. But the reason why he's my number four pass rusher is his production is very low. Playing at Georgia, they rotate a lot of guys, so he doesn't have a lot of production. He doesn't have typical size for a pass rusher um, in the NFL, but I feel like if you stick him in a 3-4 system, um, as a 3-4 outside linebacker, I feel like he'll be dominant, kind of like um, a Hassan Reddick type of edge rusher, just pin your ears back and get to the quarterback. I feel like he stops to run well for his weight, so I feel like he can start right away top 10 pick, top 10 talent. Um, you're gonna hear that a lot of a, a lot with these edge rushers. I'm really high on this edge rush class. So um, Nola Smith from Georgia, I feel like he'll be a great pass rusher in the right scheme. These next two guys I'm gonna talk about, um, Miles Murphy from Clemson. His 2021 season was ridiculous. He looked like a t easily top five pick, um, just so explosive, so strong. But his 2022 season wasn't as dominant. Now, there's many questions if he'll ever get back to that form. Um, they say he was dealing with an injury, but he's my number five guy. Some people have him really low. Some people have him really high. I still think he's a top 20 talent in this class, just based on his, his, his athleticism and his um, get off. His film in 2021 alone will put him as a first round talent. So um, his strengths, I, I feel like he's, he's just stronger. He's, he has a great bull rush move, um, kind of like with, the, with Tyree Wilson. He's not as big or as um, dominant as Tyree, Tyree Wilson is, but he kind of has that same um, type of player build that he's, he's big, strong, fast. He, need, he does need to work on his technique, work on using his hands a little bit better, a um, little bit better pass rush move. But I do feel like he's a really great project. Um, the team that, that gets him, they mold him right. He's, he has really good size. I feel like he can play a little bit of three tech on pass rushing downs. He can play outside. He can kind of do it all moving around the defensive line. I feel like whatever team drafts him is going to get a very talented pass rusher. Um, I don't know if he's going to go in the top 10 and the top five based off his 2021 film, or I don't know if he'll fall to the 20s or the teens because of his 2022 film. But I'm interested to see where he goes and what team um, will use him and where, where, where he'll fit. Next, we have Lucas Van Ness from Iowa. Now this player, um, Iowa kind of believes that they have to start their seniors. They're big on um, loyalty, so they don't start a lot of underclassmen, a lot of juniors, a lot of sophomores. So he didn't start not a single game for Iowa, but as soon as he stepped on the field, you could tell he was the best player on their defense. Now, why is he my number six guy? A lot of people have him at number three, some four, some two. He's my number six because I don't see any, really any moves from him. When you watch his film, it's just bull rush, bull rush, bull rush. And kind of what I talked about with Tyree Wilson and the Rashawn Gary um, project, if, if you, you develop him, teach him some pass rush moves with that size, that strength, um, he's a pocket pusher. So pocket pushers can be effective in the league, but I don't want to spend a top 10 pick on a guy that just pushes the pocket. So I feel like he can learn some, um, some more moves, use his hands a little bit better. I still do believe he's a top 20 talent, top 15, somewhere in that range. Um, that's probably where he'll go. But a lot of people have him Higher, like I said, I'm not too big on Lucas Van Ness. I want to see, I want to see a little bit more from him. I feel like if the if the right coach gets his hands on him, and he's in the right scheme, he can be very dominant. But in the NFL, you can't just bull rush, and that's his biggest thing he needs to work on. Next player we have is Felix 
and Yudike Uzama from Kansas State. This player, I love his explosiveness. Kind of like what I talked about with BJ Ojolari. He knows how to rush the passer. Um, it's a, like I said, it's one thing to know how to do the moves. It's another thing to know when to use them. And I feel Felix and DK Uzama will be able to start right away. Um, I think I'm higher on him than most people are as well. I have him going in the top 30 somewhere, somewhere in the first round, late first round. Um, I feel like whoever gets him will get a pass rusher that can start right away. A number two guy, you put him beside a, um, a premier pass rusher, I feel like he can be a seven, six, seven, eight sack guy right away. Like I said, he's, he, he just knows how to rush the passer. Huh? He has great finesse, great power. He can kind of do it all. I feel like he's going to be a really solid do-it-all pass rusher in the, in the NFL. He could um, work on his run fits a little bit, but I really don't see it as a as a weakness. Um, with Felix, I don't think he's amazing at anything. I just feel like he's a really good, solid edge rusher across the board. And whatever team drafts him, it's going to get a really good player. The next player I'm going to talk about is Isaiah Foskey I'm from Notre Dame. I like his size. I like his athleticism. His explosiveness, all of that just jumps off the screen. I feel like he could he could get better with his hands a little bit, better with his pass rush moves. Um, kind of just learning how and when to use his moves, working on his counters. But other than that, when it comes to size, he's 265. Um, put him at a 4-3 end. I feel like he's going to be very great and very dominant. Watching this film, I don't know why, it just reminds me of a veteran um, pass rusher in the NFL already. I feel like he'll come in and just work, just, just third or fourth down. You need a sack. I feel like he's the guy. He He's okay um, when it comes to stopping the run. I feel like his size will definitely help him, him being a bigger edge rusher. Um, I feel like that'll be one of his strengths, or strengths early. Just kind of developing his pass rush and his tools as he gets older is going to be the biggest thing with him. But um, I feel like he's a late first round, early second guy, and whatever team gets him also is going to get a very great edge player and a player that they can um, that, that you can stick beside a, a superstar edge rusher and he can be a number two guy um, on your defensive line. Next, we have Derek Hall um, from Auburn. When you look at Derek Hall, he kind of looks inhuman. He's, he's built very weird in a good way. He has freakishly long arms, but they're not like, when, when usually guys have very long arms, they're usually really skinny. They're freakishly long and they're freakishly big. Um, he's built well. I think the, the, the biggest thing with him is his stiffness. And when I say stiffness, I mean, when it, I'm, I'm talking about when it comes to his bend off the edge, I feel like he can't really bend. It, it, like like with, with most pass rushers, they have bad bend. I really don't see him bend at all. So um, it's going to be hard. He's not that big. So rushing the passer um, when you're when you're a smaller weight in the league is it to, you have to get around tackles and getting around tackles. You need bend. You either need bend or power. And he's not the biggest guy, like I said. But I feel like with his long arms, right away he'll be amazing. At stopping the run, um, I feel like he he will get sacks just off of his athleticism, um, but I don't feel like he'll ever be that number one edge guy, and that's why um, I have him going in the second round. But I do feel like right away he'll give you a couple sack numbers, um, be dominant when it comes to stopping the run, using his length to contain the outside, um, containing mobile quarterbacks trying to get out the pocket. So I feel like he'll be a really good guy, somebody who um, picks him up. Early in the second, we'll get a really good pass rush. Lastly, we have Will McDonald from Iowa State. And kind of like what I talked about, Nolan Smith. Um, I feel like he's Nolan Smith, just just not as athletic. Um, I have a second round grade on him. He's 240 pounds. He's going to be 24 entering the draft. The older guy a smaller guy, but when you turn on the film, you watch him, he's so explosive, so quick. I feel like he could put on weight. He probably needs to put on a little bit of pounds before he gets um, to the next level. That's kind of why I'm so low on him, being so much older. 
and so much lighter. I don't know where his ceiling's going to be. I don't ever see him being a number one pass rusher on the defense, but with his explosiveness, he has pretty solid bend. I feel like you stick him in a defense on the defensive line right away to be that number three or number two developmental guy. I feel like he'll work um, in a three four system. I feel he can't really play four three and he's really scheme dependent because of his size, kind of like Nola Smith, as I said previously. But um, he's older, an older guy. I feel like he'll be great in the locker room. Lastly, we have Will McDonald from Iowa State. Will McDonald's not very big, he's 240 pounds. Um, but I feel like he's very explosive. You watch his film, he jumps out jumps out at you right away. He's an older guy, been playing college for a while now. But I feel like whatever team drafts him is going to get a really good third down edge rusher. Um, I feel like you draft him mid, early second round, you're going to get a great guy. Um, he's very scheme dependent because of his size, kind of like Nolan Smith. I feel like... Um, team that drafts him in the 3-4 system, put him at 3-4 edge as a number three or number two guy right away. I feel like he'll be very effective. Um, I feel like he needs to put on some weight because um, his ability to stop the run against bigger tackles. And even tight ends, he's he's smaller. He, he's going to be one of the smaller players on the field and the, one of the smaller players in the front seven period. So he might need a couple of pounds, but just a guy that, that's going to work off the edge. Um, when it comes to sacking the quarterback, I feel like he's going to do a great job at it very early. He might even be a 9-10 to 10 sack guy um, off the rip just because of his, his pass rush savvy, his ability to use his hands, his, his speed, his explosiveness off the edge. Um, teams are going to fall in love with that. So like I said, um, middle of the second, early in the second round, the team's going to get a very great season pass rusher that um, would be – I feel like he'll be an every down pass rusher if he could put on some weight um, at the next level. Hello, it's Christian Baker from C4 Sports Talk. And today I will be talking about um, the safety class in the 2023 NFL Draft. Safeties in today's NFL are really positionless. Um, safeties are linebackers, safeties are corners, safeties are safeties. So um, I feel like there's so many different guys in this class, many different versatile pieces. There's guys that can play in the box, um, guys that can play in the slot. Um, I feel like this safety class is kind of weak with when it comes to deep, free safeties. Um, but I feel like a lot of these guys are versatile enough to kind of do it all. And many NFL teams um, will use these players in great ways. So here we go. The first safety we have today is Brian Branch from Alabama. A lot of people have him as a top 20 player in this class. I kind of have him around that 20 range. Um, when you watch his film, he looks very explosive. He looks um, very, he looks like he runs in the four fours. He looks kind of dominant. When he ran his 40, he ran in the four fives. And a lot of people think that hurt his stock. I really don't think so. I think he plays faster than what his 40 says. I think this guy is one of the most instinctive football players, period, probably in this class. It's like watching him, it's, 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 it's crazy. His, his zone instincts, his man instincts. I feel like he'll come in right away and possibly be a top 10 safety just off his, his um, knowledge of the game and his ability to react to quarterbacks' eyes, react to running backs, um, hitting the hole. So I feel like he'll come in, be very dominant. Um, I feel like he's the best nickel, nickel corner in this class. Period. I feel like he could play a little bit of um, deep safety, a little bit in the box. I feel like teams can kind of use him anywhere, and his versatility. I feel that's why he's um, so high. I kind of kind of compare him to a slower Minka Fitzpatrick when I um, when I look at him. Minka Fitzpatrick played a lot of slot. When he was in college, um, moved to to a um, free safety role in the NFL, and I don't think Brian Branch is going to um, move to a free safety role. But I feel um, just that versatility to kind of be able to play anywhere. Um, the team that drafts him, he's probably going to go in the top twenty. If not, he'll he'll definitely be going in the first round. The team that selects him is going to get a really great, instinctive player who's going to be a, a top safety in this league for the next ten to twenty years. The next player we have is Antonio Johnson from Texas A&M. 
He's a very tall safety, 6'3", 195. At Texas A&M, he played a lot of free safety, a lot of deep safety. Um, I feel like in the NFL, I feel like he's a versatile piece. I don't know if he has the speed to play deep safety in the NFL. I feel like teams can put him there and be comfortable. Um, I feel like he's probably going to be best suited with most of these players that I'm going to talk about as, as slot corners. Um, I feel like, or, or as a, as a um, strong safety star role, but I feel like he can play all along the, um, the defensive backfield. And like I said, he, he's tall, he's long, um, he's very good at zone coverage. He can play a little bit of man, kind of do it all at the safety position. Um, I feel like he's gonna go early in the second round, and whatever team gets him is gonna get a pretty, a pretty good safety, a long safety that could come up and tackle and make some plays for their defense. Um, the next player I'm going to talk about is Jamie Robinson. He's one of my guys, one of my favorite guys um, in this class. I feel like he can play the nickel. I feel like he can be in a too high system. He is sub six foot, but he plays bigger. Um, he's not scared to come down and hit. He plays really fast. When I watch him, it's, I feel like he plays the fastest at almost all of these safeties. Um, he's always around the football, and I really like that. I really like his film. Um, you watch him at the Senior Bowl. He showed the ability to play a little bit of man coverage. He showed the ability to. Um, he showed his fluent hips. He um, his Senior Bowl. He really climbed up draft boards, and um, I think he proved to me that he's going to be a very solid safety in this league. I feel like teams can get him early second, mid-second, just anywhere on day two, really, um, and get a very solid safety that can play the nickel, that can play deep, that can kind of do it all um, in the defensive backfield. Next, we have Sidney Brown from Illinois. He has a twin brother that's also in this draft class. Um, he plays running back for Illinois as well. Um, they're built very similar. They ran very similar 40s. Um, one's on the offensive side of the ball, one's on the defensive side of the ball. But as you can see, his athleticism um, runs in the bloodline. But with Sidney Brown, I feel like he's a really good safety. I feel like he's going to be really good. Um, I feel like he's a plus athlete for the position. He is sub six feet. But um, I feel like right away, in a, t in a two high, um, I feel like he can play single high safety. I feel like he can play a little bit of nickel. I don't think he's as versatile as Jamie Robinson is, but I still feel like he can do all of these things um, at a very high level. I feel like team, any team that takes him on day two is gonna get a really solid safety. Um, safety that can come in and start right away. He seems very smart, he seems very instinctive. So um, I feel like that'll translate in the NFL. Next, we have Jordan Battle from Alabama. I feel like he is the premier box safety in this class. Um, kind of like what I said about everybody else, though, I feel like he can play nickel. I feel like he can play a little bit of um, deep safety. I feel like he needs to work on his um, hip his hip fluidity, uh, but for the most part, I think he's good in zone, solid in man. Um, I feel like he'll be a, a, a pretty solid safety. He has okay ball skills, but his ability to hit and come down um, he has really good size at um, 6'1", 210. So whatever team drafts him is going to get a pretty solid safety. Kind of, um, like I said, that day three range. With these last three guys I've talked about, I feel like they can get drafted um, really anywhere based off of team fits or what a team needs. So, um, But whatever team gets Jordan Brown is going to get a very aggressive safety, um, very hard hitter with solid ball skills. I feel like he'll be a, a star. A star safety in this league for a pretty, a pretty good, pretty long time, and um, if he works on his his flip, his hip fluidity and his ability to cover a little bit more, I feel like he'll be a superstar safety in this league. I feel like his upside is bigger than most of these players. I feel like it's a um, kind of a low floor, high ceiling situation. I feel like right away, um, he'll kind of just be best in the box, um, kind of kind of that strong safety role, but. Um, I feel like he can, as he gets further on in his development, I feel like he could kind of do it all and be a superstar in this league. Um, the next player we have is Christopher Smith from Georgia. I feel like he's going to be a very great um, deep safety in this league. Um, I feel like other than 
Antonio Johnson, he is the best pure free safety um, in this draft class. Um, I'm, I have him at number six because he's not as versatile as some of these other guys um, that are ranked above him. But I feel like when it comes to that cover two high safety or that cover three um, deep safety, I feel like he can play that role very well. He's very instinctive. He moves very quick. And so whatever team drafts him, I feel like they're going to get a solid free safety. Um, I feel like he'll get drafted somewhere in day two, probably third round. Um, I feel like he's a third round talent, not so much a second round talent. But I feel like the, whatever team drafts him is going to get a very solid, decent player. The next player we have um, is J.L. Skinner. Now, J.L. Skinner, he's probably my favorite safety um, personally. Um, watching him play is very exciting. He comes up, he hits like a freight train. It's, it's crazy. He's 6'4", very long. Um, he weighed in at 2'11", though, which is kind of skinny for that 6'4 frame. People thought he was going to be a little bit bigger because in the NFL, He's not gonna. He doesn't have the speed to play um, deep safety, play that free safety role. So a lot of people um, were looking at him as a box safety, but he doesn't really have the weight for that either. He weighed in at two eleven, um, which he can still play in the box, but not every down, not really as that that sub linebacker um, type of type of role. So his biggest thing, um, I feel like he's a great football player. He has solid ball skills. Like I said, he's the hardest hitter in this class he comes he comes down and, and really lays the boom but where does he fit in, a, in an NFL defense is he a free safety he can't really play that um he could play that strong safety role but do you really trust him in a um in a cover too deep look when it comes to playing over the top um I don't think teams will really trust him with that role um I don't think he's big enough to play in the box so that kind of just leaves him with that nickel that um that nickel corner type of role, which I feel like he'll excel in. Just he'll be basically another linebacker on the field, playing in that nickel role. Now, will he shine in man coverage? That's something we really don't know. Um, he doesn't really splash in man coverage, so um, I feel like that's the biggest thing with him. It's 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 where where he's gonna fit in an NFL scheme. That's why he's my number seven. I feel like pure as a pure, as a pure football player. Um, he could be a top three on my list, but just because he's a light, long, slow safety that can hit, it's very it's very hard to um to scout him. I feel like he'll go in the third round, most likely. Third or fourth, and a team's gonna get a very interesting player that um that can be a chess piece, but teams are gonna have to figure out what they wanna do with him for him to succeed. Um the next player I have on my list is Jair Brown from Penn State. Now, I'm higher on Jair Brown, I feel like, than a lot of people. When you watch his film, it screams ball hawk. He's always around the ball. He has six interceptions this past season. Um, and I feel like just that alone, his zone coverage instincts are good. Um, you look at his 2021 film when he played with um, Jaquan Brisker from Chicago, who plays with the Chicago Bears now. but. Um, I looked at that safety duo. I feel like that was one of the best safety duos in, in all of college football that I've ever watched in my years of watching football. So I'm um, watching Jair Brown, his ability to just track the ball when it's, you put him at that, that deep safety, that free safety role, I feel like um, he'll shine. He's, he's a really, like I said, he's really good in zone. Um, I feel like he could come down and play some man. He's not that fast, and, and that's why I feel like he's going to fall probably to the third or fourth round, probably to the fourth round. I have him as a third round talent, but um, he's a turnover machine. And I feel like if, if you put him in the right system, in the right defense, um, he's gonna make a lot of plays for your defense. And he, he's, he's not afraid to tackle, he can come down and hit. He's big for his frame, he's not that tall, but he has a, he has a little bit of weight to him, which is a good thing. So um, I feel like whatever team gets him is gonna get a third, a third safety right away, kind of a guy that can, um, if you have your safeties playing in a nickel or one of your starting safeties playing in a box, you can kind of stick him in to play that free safety role, um, kind of as that third guy and t to develop him into a um, potential starter, a very long starter that can make a lot of plays for you in your secondary. The next player we have is Jartavius Martin from Illinois. Um, 
we've talked about corners and safeties, and this is the third defensive back that I talked about from Illinois. Their their defensive backs played amazing this year. Um, probably the best, one of the best secondaries in all of college football. Um, Jartavius Martin, I feel like he'll come in right away and just be an amazing nickel corner. I feel like um, that's what he is. That's what he's defined as. I really don't see him doing much else, but I feel like he's going to be a very solid nickel corner. Um, I feel like he will fall because a lot of teams just see him as a nickel, which I also just see him as a nickel as well. Um, probably that fourth, that third, fourth round. But whatever team drafts him is going to get, like I said, a very solid nickel, um, nickel corner. And um, he can he can play man, he can play zone. He's instinctive. He can tackle a little bit, kind of just do it all. I feel like he's not amazing at anything. I feel like he's just a very okay nickel corner that could come in and eventually start for a defense. My number 10 safety on this um, in this 2023 draft class is Brandon Joseph. Now, some people are higher on Brandon Joseph. Some people are lower. He's one of those players that had an amazing season early on in his amazing an amazing season early on in his college career. Then after that, it's like he got worse and worse and worse. Um, he didn't showcase the ball skills that he showed um, earlier on in college football. So it's interesting to see if he'll return back to his um, former self. Now, I feel like he's he's very, he's, he's gonna be a very um, good deep safety, 6'1", um, solid size. But will he will he be that, that, that ball hawk that he was earlier on in his college career? And I feel like that's what's separating him right now is that his biggest strength was his ability to go up high point and um, make plays and make turnovers. And he didn't, he didn't do that the latter part of his career in college, so. Um, he definitely will fall, but how far, I do not know. It could be to the fifth round. It could be somewhere late third. It could be somewhere in the fourth. For me, I have a late fourth round talent, late fourth round grade on him, just because I'm unsure. Now, his his, his early interceptions early on in his career, I really don't think they were luck, but um, you could de he definitely showcased ball skills, but it's like, it's like he wasn't the same player. He didn't have the same production. Um, later on, the, the the latter part of his career. So, will he be able to get back to his former self? If he does get back to his former self, he will be a very great safety, top ten maybe even in the league. His um his potential is is out is, is off the charts. But we don't know if that that year that that he had all those interceptions that he played amazing. We don't know if it was a fluke because that's kind of what it looks like, or if that's how he really plays in these last couple of years have just been down years for him. But a team that drafts him late in the fourth, I feel like he can sit for a year or two, um, get a couple reps in at safety, because teams need safeties, teams need multiple safeties. Like I said, they use their safeties in all different types of packages. So um, a team can pick him up, let him sit, and, and get a little bit of PT here and there. And I feel like he can be solid. Um, a, a solid playmaker on the defense. That is my 2023 safeties rankings. Hello, this is Christian Baker from C4 Sports Talk. Today I'm going to be talking to you guys about the linebacker class of the 2023 um, NFL draft class. And there's very, there's a lot of very interesting linebackers. I feel like this is the most interesting um, group of players. There's, there's there's freakishly athletic guys. There's guys that are small. Um, there's guys that are short. There's guys that are big. There's guys, I feel like you, you're going to be able to get kind of what you want in the later rounds of this class. I don't feel like there's that number one first-round talent, but I feel like there's some solid some solid linebackers later on in this class that can make a difference um, in the NFL. So let's get started. The first linebacker I'm going to talk about today is Jack Campbell from Iowa. Now... When you watch his film, he doesn't look that fast. He doesn't look that great of an athlete. But um, he answered a lot of questions. Um, ran a, a pretty solid 40-yard dash time. So um, he has prototypical size, perfect middle linebacker size, 6'5", 250. Um, he's kind of like the dream the dream linebacker. Um, you watch his tape. He, he's very instinctive in the run game. He's very smart. Um, I feel like he could do a little bit better. And coverage. Now, that's not saying he's bad by any means. I really don't think, I really don't think Jack Campbell has really any holes in this game. He's a solid tackler. 
Um, I feel like he's going to be a very solid inside linebacker, kind of the leader, the Mike, the leader of a defense um, very early on in his career. Um, I have him going early in the second round. I don't think he's a first-round talent. I feel like it's hard. It's really hard to be a first-round talent inside linebacker. Um, kind of just like, kind of like with running backs, um, people don't take inside linebackers in the first round. But I feel like a team that gets him early on in the second will be very happy. Um, come and start right away and lead a defense. The next linebacker I'm going to talk about is Trenton Simpson from Clemson. He's very athletic, very versatile. Mm. I feel like a team can come get him early in the second round. They're going to get uh, just an uber-athletic linebacker that can kind of do it all. Um, I don't think he really has a lot of holes in his game. Um, he can he can, he can can rush the passer. He can drop back in coverage. He's fast. He's not very big. He's um, in that 230 range, but I don't think that's going to be very much of an issue. I feel like you stick him at 4-3 outside linebacker and just kind of let him do it all. Um, Blitzing off the edge, I feel like he's he's probably the best um, the best off ball linebacker when it comes to rushing the passer in this class. He's probably the best coverage linebacker in this class. Um, I really like Trenton, Trenton Simpson. Um, I really like I said I really don't feel like he has many holes. I feel like he could put on a little bit of weight to help him um, shed blocks. That's probably his biggest weakness. But other than that, as a as an um, outside linebacker in this league, I feel like he'll be very dominant um, early and often as a second-round pick in this next in this upcoming draft. Um, the next linebacker we have is Drew Sanders from Arkansas. Now, I just said that um, Tristan Simpson was the best pass rushing linebacker in this class, but that definitely has to go to Drew Sanders. Um, he's double-digit sack numbers, um, but. He wants to make that make that switch to inside linebacker um, at the next level, and I feel like he'll be really good at it. Maybe not inside though. I feel like kind of like with Trenton Simpson, you put him in that four three scheme, um, send him on a couple blitzes. He can he can um, blitz rush off the edge. I feel like he'll be very effective. Um, I feel like he'll be a dominant pass rusher. I feel like he's good in coverage. He's a very good athlete. I feel like he's a do it all linebacker. The biggest issue with him is his missed tackles. Um, he misses a lot of tackles. And at the linebacker position, it's not something you really can do. So um, if he can clean that up, just his ability to um, finish tackles, I feel like he will be a very solid um, linebacker in this league. Like I said, another second round guy, um, the guy you can get in the second round. And just, just kind of work. He, he went from middle linebacker in high school to to edge rusher in college, back to middle, back to edge. He can kind of do it all. He's very versatile, and I like that about him. He's um, solid size in the 240s, and I feel like a team's going to get a really good player if they draft Drew Sanders. Um, the next guy, I don't know if I'm pronouncing his name right, but it's, it's Dean Henley from Washington State. Now, this is probably the most interesting player, period, in this class. He was a wide receiver from Nevada and decided to switch his position to linebacker. And you would think, as a former wide receiver that plays linebacker, you would think, oh, he's he's scared or he doesn't want to take on blocks. And with Henley, you get the complete opposite. Um, he's he, he's very aggressive. Um, he's a solid tackler. Um, he's very good in coverage because he has that wide receiver background, um, very instinctive. But um, he's, he's in that 230 range. Kind of like I said with everybody else, that 4-3 outside linebacker, um, that 4-3 outside linebacker role, I feel like would really suit him. But um, I feel like he's, he's definitely a project. He hasn't been playing the linebacker position for very long. But he might have the highest upside in this class because of that reason alone. He is kind of older, so um, um, he will be 23 entering the, um, the next NFL season. But... Um, you're going to get a guy that, that's just an uber athlete. As I said, he's a, he was a former wide receiver, so he can move. He's very fluent. Um, he's a solid tackler, solid at stopping the run. He's just kind of a solid guy that, that, can, that, can, um, that you can mold. Um, I feel like a team can draft him, sit him for a year or two, um, teach him to make, let him learn the defense behind a veteran, and then he'll come in and be, be pretty solid right away. I, I have a um, third-round, third to fourth-round grade on him. 
So um, I feel like a team's gonna get a very uh, a very interesting guy that they could that could they could choose to develop. Now this next guy, Dorian Williams from Tulane, um, he's the best coverage linebacker in this class, not named Trenton Simpson. Um, I feel like he's really good in coverage. He's a really good athlete. Ran four four nine. Um, his biggest weakness is his size. Now he's he's not very big at all. Um, he almost looks like a safety, but he hits. He comes down and he hits and he hits and he hits. Um, he does have an issue with setting blocks. If he if he adds a little bit of pounds, I feel like um, that'll help him. But I feel like he's going to be a solid, um, a very good, very good pass um, pass coverage third third fourth down linebacker in this NFL. Um, because of that, I feel like he'll fall to the third, third or fourth round. Because I don't think he'll ever be an every down, an every down linebacker in this league. I feel like um, if he's out there for passing downs, um, but like that's the thing with with today's NFL. Why put a passing down linebacker out there if you could put a safety? So it's very interesting. Um, I feel like if he could put on weight, um, just get a little bit stronger and run fits. I feel like he will be a, a solid every down linebacker, every down linebacker, and a a 4-3 outside linebacker um, role, or if teams do want to put him in that 3-4 role, um, they can. They might want to put a, a bigger, a bigger, better run stuffer beside him, but his his ability in zone coverage just screams. Like, his, his ability to cover, his athleticism, his ability to move with tight ends, and, and um, even slot receivers sometimes, I feel like that'll translate very great into the NFL. Um, the next player we have is DeMarvion Overshawn. From Texas, um, this guy just screams athleticism. Like he he ran a solid forty, you know, checks all the boxes. But when you watch him on film, his motor is like ridiculous. He it's like he's like he's juiced up. Like he, he plays with so much energy, so much fire. Um, I feel like he can put on some weight, help him stop the run. Um, and he's he's okay in in coverage, but just when it comes to just him. When, when, he, when he sees a ball carrier, when he sees a quarterback, and his pursuit, um, I feel like he probably has probably the best pursuit in this class, period. Um, he's always around the football. I just feel like that's that's going to translate well into the NFL. But now, like, where do you use him? Because like I said, he's not great in coverage, and he's not great um, setting blocks. So um, does, that just be, does that just mean he's a special teams guy? I really don't think so. I feel like... He's just gonna be okay at both of those things um, when it comes to, to stuffing the run and um, playing his own coverage. I feel like a team can take him fourth, fifth round, maybe even earlier depending on um, what team decides to select him. But I feel like he's, like I said, he's a solid athlete, a really good athlete um, that, can, that can be a solid linebacker. Um, maybe he'll put on some weight at this next level. He's very long, which is a good thing. That can, that can help him shed blocks. Um, but I think a team's gonna get a very a, pro, a project linebacker late late in the draft drafting the Marvin Oliver. The next guy we have on this list is Ivan Pace. Ivan Pace is one of my favorite players in this draft class. Um, he just screams hard over height. He's a 5'10", 230 pound linebacker. Now you never heard of a 5'10 linebacker ever in your life. And I know, but when you watch him play football, he's ridiculous. Um, he's one of the better pass rushers out of all of these linebackers. He's one of the better pass rushers, period, in the class, um, having double-digit sacks multiple times in his career. His bend at 5'10 is ridiculous, just the just ability to, to, to dip under tackles and get to the quarterback. He can rush the passer. I think he's pretty solid in zone coverage. Um, He's a, he's a pretty good tackler. I feel like he's a very good, versatile piece. If this guy was six feet, I feel like he'd be a first-round talent. Maybe maybe even top 10 if he was 6'2", if 6'3". Six, six, but um, this, the, the height is the biggest thing. There's not really a pro comp for him because he's so small. Um, and, like, you've seen even 5'11", 5'10", linebackers that play off the ball, but you've never seen a 5'10", linebacker that also rushes the passer. So... He's really, he's really a unicorn, but I really like this guy. Um, I feel as if he's a fourth or fifth round talent. Teams are gonna draft him. Um, 
whoever drafts him is just gonna have to really be versatile and use him in multiple ways. I really don't feel like you can just stick him as an off the ball linebacker. Um, I feel like to really use him right, I feel like you gotta give him opportunities off the edge. Yes, even at 5'10. Um, you say 230 pounds, that sounds small. That's not really small at all. Um, 230 pounds at 5'10", he's built like a brick house. Um, so I feel like he, he will be successful in the NFL. I don't think the height will um, I think the height will really um, affect him too much. Um, I feel like he will fall in the draft because of his height and his size. So I feel like whatever team gets him is going to get a player, a very fun player that um, they can use all over, the, all over the field. I really don't ever think he'll be a, a solidified starter. But I feel like just as a rotational guy, just to plug and play, um, if you need him to go get a sack, I feel like you can do it. If you need him to, to cover a safety, I mean, to cover a tight end or um, even a slot receiver, um, I feel like he can go do it. Um, he can definitely tackle. He can make plays. and um, I feel like he's, he's really one of a kind. So it's going to be interesting to see where he goes and how his career plans out. And um, to see if that 5'10", 230 build can be successful. Because if it is successful, maybe some some other um, shorter, smaller linebackers will start getting drafted higher because of this player. The next guy we have on this list is Owen Popill from Auburn. Um, he's he's a really good athlete. That's that's really just how you describe him. Um, everything football needs to be worked on. I feel like he plays with a high motor. He, he has good pursuit. Um, his athleticism does jump off the screen. He ran in the four threes. I'm not surprised that he ran in the four threes. Um, like I said, his athleticism jumps off the screen, but I feel like everything else needs a little bit of help. Um, he's an okay tackler. He's okay in zone. Um, I feel like just, just um, if a team can get him and really malnourish his football, football skills, I feel like he'll definitely probably go in day three. A team might bite on him in day two just based off of his athleticism alone. Um, but it's going to be very interesting um, to see how his career plays out as well. Um, he'll definitely be dominant on special teams right away. Just um, his speed, he's, he's pretty strong. Um, he can he definitely needs to put on some weight um, to play linebacker at the next level. Um, if he's not going to put on weight, he needs to get a lot better in coverage so that teams can trust him guarding tight ends and slot receivers, so on and so forth. Um, but whatever team drafts this guy is going to get a really good athlete. And sometimes you just gotta draft the best athlete, hoping that they that everything will everything else will come together. Thanks. The next player we have is Henry Toa Toa from Alabama. Um, Henry's he's just a do good linebacker. I feel like he sheds blocks well. He's okay in zone. Um, a lot of teams are higher than him. He's not the best athlete and. This is why I feel like I'm so low um, on Henry Tuatua because he's not the best athlete. He's not the biggest. I feel like he is a first and second down run stuffing linebacker. But to be that in today's NFL, I feel like you have to have the size for it. He's sub 230. So, um, and like I said, he doesn't really splash in coverage. He doesn't really have a lot of um, a lot of amazing plays in coverage. So. I feel like he's just a do a do good linebacker, just a, guy, a kind of guy that can just that'll get the job done, but not really amazing at anything. Um, and like I said, that ability to stop the run is gonna it's gonna be very hard to do at two hundred twenty something pounds. Um, that sub two thirty, something that 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 really that I feel like that really will hurt him, um, especially his stock. Somebody will somebody will probably draft him um, fourth, fifth, maybe sixth round. Um, I feel like they're going to get a pretty solid linebacker, the guy that they can develop. Um, just maybe he'll, hopefully he'll put on a couple pounds, um, a guy that, that can just develop in coverage, learn learn a little bit more um, about football. And he, he, might, he might be a starter later down the line in two or three years. Now, this last guy I'm going to talk about, um, a lot of people probably are wondering why I haven't talked about him already. He is my number 10 linebacker. He's my number 10 linebacker for a reason. And um, that's Noah Sewell from Oregon. He was a five-star prospect coming out of high school, um, nationally ranked. He's 6'5", 250, built like a tr truck. Um, and 
yes, this this sounds this sounds very enticing. He's a, he's a pretty good athlete. He can um, rush the passer a little bit, but he his lateral movement is is it's really horrible, I, and I don't think that's gonna translate at all when it comes to the next level. Um, I feel like he can't go side to side. I feel like um, he can't really cover. He has okay. Uh, he had a couple a couple splash plays um, when it came to coverage. I'm um, watching his film, but it's nothing special at all. I feel like he's going to be a first and second down run stuffing linebacker. But when it comes to the guys with speed um, that he's trying to stop, I feel like he he's not he's not he can't go sideline to sideline whatsoever. And that's literally what this NFL is becoming. Um, guys that that can there, a lot of teams are drafting linebackers that can go sideline to sideline. Um, he's really just just a big mass in the middle of the field. I don't think um, I don't think he's gonna be that dominant middle linebacker that um, many people think he he will be. Um, now that's not saying it's not possible, but when you look at his hips, his hips are very stiff. He can't, like I said, he can't move sideways. So team that drafts him, I feel like he's gonna be he's probably gonna be a um, Probably fourth, fifth round pick, maybe even earlier, a team might fall in love with him. I have him as a six round talent. Like I said, just because of his lateral movement and his lateral quickness, I don't think it's there. Um, but a team that's drafted him will get a project, um, a big, athletic linebacker that can that that can move um, forward to backwards very well. Um, just just getting his ability to um, cover better and his maybe get, just open up his hips to use his hips. Make his hips a little bit more fluent and um, just just help his lateral movement. Cause if that if that's the case, if he can move, if he can move side to side, that's that's so big when it comes to playing linebacker in the NFL. People don't realize that if he can move side to side, he he'd be a first round pick, um, which which a lot of people had him going on to be earlier on in his um, college career. It's really not it's just not the 1900s anymore where you just draft a big linebacker and he can stuff holes. It's so much zone schemes and zone read options and this, that, and the third that he has to be able to shuffle, 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 get back, shuffle, shuffle, shuffle. And I don't think he's going to be able to do all of that. So those are my 2023 NFL um, player rankings for the linebacker position. And I'll talk to you guys later.